Um, when Jennifer and I lived in Chicago, the, at the church where we worked, there was a gentleman by the name of Dave Griesmer. And uh, Dave Griesmer uh, was well known around the church, but he was... Uh, he wasn't a believer. He was, I think he was, he was either an agnostic or an atheist, I'm not for sure. But he was, everybody knew that Dave was not a Christian. But even so, he had strong ties to the church for a couple reasons. One, his wife was a secretary there. So um, she was on staff. She was a Christian. Um, but then the other reason was, Dave was a, just an outstanding musician. And so oftentimes they would ask him um, to play with their worship band. In fact, it was somewhat of a regular occurrence. And he would play with them. And uh, was just an excellent, excellent musician. Great guy, fun to talk to, super nice, but everybody just knew that Dave, Dave's just not a Christian, and probably, most people are probably thinking, and he never will be. And I still remember the, uh, after we'd been there for about a year, year and a half, we had a revival at the church, which, for those of you who've never had one of those before, basically it means you have church kind of every night for a whole week or something like that. Doesn't that sound incredible? Yes. It's amazing. Um, it's awesome. Especially, it's awesome. Especially if we have you here. Oh, especially <laughs> if I was speaking, right. Uh, but anyway, um, on probably like the third night, I would say, um, I was leading worship. It happened to be I didn't lead every night, but that night I was leading worship. And I still remember the preacher got up. It was a guest preacher. He gave a sermon. He gave an invitation afterwards. He sit, sits back down. We get up and we're, and we're singing that first song. And I see someone kind of slip up and grab the arm of the senior minister at our church. I didn't know who just noticed who it was. I just thought... Okay, after the song, I'll probably have to stop because they're probably going to say something. I stop after that first song, and our senior minister gets up, and he's not a very typically a very emotional guy, but he gets up to talk, and he can barely speak. It's, I mean, it's almost a whisper, and you just hear him say, Tonight, Dave Reesmer has come forward to give his life to Christ. And I kid you not, in that moment, and Jennifer could probably test in this, in that moment, you could literally hear an audible gasp over the whole congregation. It was kind of like about two, 250 people all at the same time went, <gasps> kind of did this. And it was just an amazing spirit-filled moment. And, and what was amazing about it is probably that those 200, 250 people that all went, <gasps> probably almost everyone would probably thought, I never thought this guy would become a Christian, except for maybe one person in that congregation, and that would be his wife. Um, and I still remember talking to her after that night, and just talking about what happened, and she said, you know, I've been praying for him for about, probably about 30 years, I've been praying for him that he would become a Christian. And on that night, she saw her prayer answered. But it wasn't just a prayer of just that she offered once, or twice, or three times. It was a prayer that she offered daily, and weekly, and monthly, and yearly for 30 years, and she saw that prayer answered that night after all that time. Jesus tells a story about that. I want to read to you. It's in Luke 18, uh, verses 1 through 8. I want to read this. It says this. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly, saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? And one of the things we've talked about with parables is parables typically have one point. Um, and you can get in a lot of trouble if you try to make too many, if you try to make an analogy, try to draw too many connections. They typically have one point. And in this parable, he tells us right off the bat what his point is. He says, Jesus told this story so that those listening would pray and never give up. But that was the reason he told it. He wanted them to have to pray constantly and not give up in that. And in that, we see God's heartbeat for the way that we're supposed to pray. We see that he wants us to be a people that pray and pray again and pray again and pray again. And we just don't pray once. We just don't pray twice. We pray without stopping about the same thing until we see God answer it. 
And to be honest, this passage, this aspect of God, has often puzzled me. Because I've never really understood why, okay, if God can answer these, why doesn't he just do it? You know, why do we have to, why does he want us to ask, and to ask again, and to ask again? And I'm not really sure why. I don't think it's because he just wants to torment us, or torture us, or he likes kind of spinning us around. In fact, uh, one of the things that it says in here is, he, God is kind of compared to the unjust judge, but he's, he's shown to, he's, what he's shown is, okay, this unjust judge, even though he wasn't a good man, he answered this woman's plea. How much more, God? And kind of what's implying there is how much more our God, who is just, who is loving, who is caring, is going to answer this woman's request. So, so God's heartbeat is not to torment us. He wants to answer our prayers. So I don't think it's that. And I don't think it's that God is kind of a, you know, a slot machine God. So I don't know. I know that makes me a nerd, but I don't have any posters of them in my room. But anyway, one of my favorite theologians is a guy named Tom Wright. And I heard him talk one time about prayer. And just kind of in a moment where he kind of, kind of got away from the theology and just talked about it from, from the heart, just on a personal note. He said, you know, to be honest, prayer is hard. He said, sometimes carving out that time to spend time with God in prayer is just a hard thing. And he, and he said, personally, he remembers <laughs> Uh, for he and his wife, when their kids were young, which this was very encouraging to me, because that's kind of where we are right now, he said, when my, when my kids were young, my wife and I had a, a really hard time finding time to pray. But then he said this, whatever the challenge is, whatever the obstacles you face, the, the, the bottom line is, we just, we got to get on with it. When it comes to prayer, we just got to get on with it. And I don't know what your challenge is when it comes to prayer. It might be you don't know what to do. Um, and if that's the case, come talk to me. And I'll give you some ideas. Um, I know some people pray through the Lord's Prayer, use that as a model, taking each line to kind of, and then springing off of that and praying for things. Some people use the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S, um, Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, Supplication, uh, to, to give shape to the prayers. I know my wife, when she was in college, she had a running prayer list, and what she did was she put a few things on each day. And when it would get to that, like on Monday, she'd pray for A, B, and C, D, and F, D, and F. Um, on Tuesday, she'd pray for these things. And on Wednesday, she'd pray for these things. And that just gave shape to her, her life. So if it's that, you're not really sure what to do, talk to someone. We can help you with that. Um, if that's your challenge, then get to it. Because <laughs> something comes up, and i got to do this, and i got to take care of this. And, and, and so sometimes the challenge is we've just got to prioritize. We've got to say, we're going to do it. This is, this is my date time with God. So that might be it. But whatever it is, Whatever your challenge is, the message of this text is that we just need to get on with it. That prayer is something that we need to do again and again and again and not stop. So if you have situations in your life right now that you want to see God work in and you haven't seen Him work in yet, we know what you want Him to be. You want Him to be a God who's going to work in that situation, but He wants you to be someone who cries out to Him day and night. And if you're not doing that, or until you're doing that, you need to hear the message of this passage. And in the words of uh, my superstar theologian, Tom Wright, you just need to get on with it. You need to get on with crying out to God and persisting in prayer on a daily basis. Let me pray for you.